This is what Warner looked like on an earlier run. His speed of 296 miles an hour was well under his record. Prior to his last run, he and his crew were worried about the gentle but increasing winds as we spoke to him just 10 minutes before the crash. The bike that I have has a tremendous amount of power. Yeah. So by getting to 300, we just can't turn up the power. We actually are turning it down to try to get the bike to settle down. And now, after we've turned it down enough that I can handle it, I just turn it up a little bit at a time. And we've gotten a 296. So we've got just a little bit more to go, but hopefully we can keep it on the ground. As he came to the line for the last time, he had the respect of the fans and the stands. He had been seriously injured in a crash in Texas a year ago, but came back to time trials, which added to his reputation as a well-conditioned and tough competitor. Experienced racers suspected mechanical difficulties on Warner's last run. He was going 287 at the mile marker when his bike suddenly veered hard to the right and went off the runway. Witnesses said he was launched 40 feet high and 100 yards down the track. Earlier, he had told me what it's like when things go wrong at such high speeds. What's that like at 290? Uh, in a wheelie, it's really scary. I, uh, I, yeah, yeah. If uh, 290 and everything's planted, and it's it's very fun. We've got the emergency crews coming in. Warner was conscious and talking as he was taken to the hospital, but he was pronounced dead at Cary Medical Center at 11:15, which was about an hour after his fateful run.